Uh, I just want to thank everybody for coming. I'm unbelievably amazed by the dedication of the Evolve fans to come in the rain on Thursday. A thousand people show up, party with all the love in their hearts. A lot of people say they love this new property and it's great to hear. And a lot of people are talking about the property, but what I hear more and what's most important about this community, this party could go anywhere and it's the people and it's the love and it's the awesomeness that's here. So thank you for coming. I also want to say, um, I'd like everybody for one minute just to make a heart sign, put it on their heart. Right on your heart, not up, right here, right down, right down, right on your heart. Take, just, just for a second, think about somebody who inspires you, somebody who you've loved in your life. They could be somebody who passed away like a grandmother, somebody who makes you so happy, and that love, that energy, I just want you to breathe that in once. One more thing, we had somebody, I just want to honor a, a past Evolver. Last year, Dylan Champion passed away at Evolve. And I want to take a one moment of silence, and I want to take those hands from the heart, and I want to raise them to the sky. That's right, Champion Love, that's one of the new models for Evolve after Dylan. And it's the most important thing, and we all know it. It's love. And that's what brings us here. Keep championing love, people. It's so important. And, I, and we, I, we see it here. It's all around us. And it's so fucking awesome. Just want to say again, thanks for coming. We're in our new home. We bought the property. We're here. We're here to stay. I also want to thank you all, but I also want to thank, and just put it out there, all the people that make this festival possible. From, there are so many volunteers that sacrifice their time to make this happen in 10 weeks. From, uh, let's make some noise for the volunteers, all the people who didn't shower, didn't have food, gave everything they had so we could have a party here this weekend. I've got an elder lady here who's a neighbor from down the road. She's one of the most powerful people I've met, one of the p most powerful speakers. I've invited her just to talk for a minute, and I'd like for you to give her your attention and give her your heart. <laughs> Willie Nolan. Jonas, I'm going to get a little bit rough. You want that? Are you sure? I love you. My spiritual name is Little Fire. Always burning. But my name under the colonial industrial complex is Willie Nolan. So that's how a lot of you know me. Greetings. I give my greetings and welcome to our neighborhood. You guys came here. I respect this place as a District 6 of the Mi'kmaq homelands in Wabanaki Confederacy territory. That's where we live, it's beautiful, eh? I give my gratitude to all the organizers and supporters, they've been working so hard and uh, created a space where I'm seeing you, free to be happy, to be creative, to love and care I am amazed. This is my first Evolve. What an honor. Thank you. <laughs> wow.
Our beautiful Jonas came by in the most sacred, humble way, and he brought me a gift of medicine to ask if I would come here and say some words to inspire, to inspire the people and uh, give you guys something to, come, to go home with, something good, something good to go home with. And I'll do my best. We can evolve now. Look, you're here in New Brunswick, Kent County. We've earned a reputation as a center of a planet-wide anti-fracking revolution. <laughs> We're now frack-free, and we earned it. How we did that was by acting in awareness and in unity. I, I did some ceremonies before the place got filled up and I asked if it was a message that I could give to you people that would help, some, something to take home. So the message came through the sacred pipe and they say, if you want harmony, you gotta maintain your awareness. You gotta stay awake this time. Stay evolved this time. Yep. That sounds right? Okay. So I took some time to check in with people uh, who'd been coming for a long time, some since you were small children. And they say that there's a time, a number said that there's a time right after Evolve where they get depressed, don't know what to do with themselves for five days, two weeks, or months. They just, it's not good. Well, that's what I said, what's wrong? What's missing? What's missing? So that doesn't happen. How can you go home with something good? What a good question, Jonas. Like, yeah, how do they take home something good? Yeah. So, this has, a, to me, a potential for being life-changing. How many places do you know where the vibe, the theme is love and it's caring and it's acceptance? Who you are is good, right? <laughs> yeah, so you can take that home because you're gonna be good there too. You just are, you just are. And we need us, we need our love and our care, otherwise they're gonna give us what we don't want, fracking, war, we don't want it. We want love protect us. So, I did say uh, I was going to stir up some, uh, some stuff now that will be a little uncomfortable to help out. We got a great opportunity to strengthen ourselves. So we need to look at some hard truths. Answer me the question. Raise your hands. I got, got a question from Jane Elliott, a great teacher. We'll start with her. Which of you white people would accept being treated the same way as black people are generally treated in society on a daily basis? Who's volunteering for that? Okay, so let's put it another way and extend the question. Which of you people would accept being treated the same way as indigenous, aboriginal people are generally treated by society on a daily basis? Who wants that? Who's volunteering for that? Yeah. Let's go further. Which of you rich people would accept being treated the same way as people living in poverty are generally treated in our society on a daily basis? Yes. 
So, I, I, we have a shared history of shame, right? Hurt and cruelty. We have a, a shared history that we need to let go of, hey? We used to do that. We can evolve now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't let the shame, let the fear paralyze us. We don't have to. We don't have to go home and be depressed. We can go home and be active. I love what I've got in me. I'm letting it, I'm letting it out. You know, in a society that thinks of happiness as a mental affective disorder, do we have an option? Yeah, we can be human beings. Yeah. So this is what we did in New Brunswick, revolution-wise, because I know some of you want to know how do we take down the stuff that's really going to kill us. So we joined in unity. We joined in unity no matter what. You guys saw us across the country, you guys in New Brunswick. We bet. <laughs> you, we joined in unity by opening our eyes to each other's suffering. And we work together to defend, to protect, and to heal our water and our lives. We joined in unity even when the police took orders from the wrong people and brutalized and violated our alliance of peoples. They brutalized and we kept going in unity anyway. We did it for the water that we depend on for our lives that you're going to need for your great-grandchildren, huh, Duas? We're going to keep it. It's frack-free now. We can replicate this. We joined in unity even when we saw that our own bad teachings tried to get in the way. I've been fed some shit, I have to get rid of it. Like that? Yeah. Yeah. They, you know, they tried to let the racism they taught us get in our way our classism, our materialism, our false ego, threats or violence get in our way and we stayed in unity. That didn't work, doesn't work because love is stronger, unity is stronger. We can evolve. Yeah. So this year, it's, that's it. We're gonna continue evolving and it's gonna be hard. It's going to be hard. It's going to be tough, but it's kind of like exercising. You just get better at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So now that we have power, it's collective, right? It's because you're me, and I'm you, and I love you, and you love me, and it's good. That's all we have to do and stand in that unity. But every day, you know? Some of you have, uh, I hear, a problem talking about things that you think are religious. I am a spiritual grandmother. I do hold ceremonies. I do hold you at this moment in ceremony to give what you need. I don't think of it as religion because it's just mine. Yours is yours. Yeah. This uh, creation is real. The winds are real. The water in you and me. And it's real. And through that, we can connect. Did you know that water never, never, never forgets where it's been? It remembers everywhere it's been. We're talking. My breath is going to yours. The water is exchanging, eh? All of us. It's always happening. Inspired.
They don't have to go home with us. Are confused or anxious. They let yourself continue to walk barefoot. When you walk barefoot, you can feel and sense the suffering of the people of the planet. You can sense it's in your mind, even if you got big winter boots on, you're walking here for your feeling. If you're feeling, you're suffering. You're not going to inflict it, are you? If you're always open to the suffering of our Mother Earth, you'll always be part of protecting your mind to life. Your if your eyes are always open to the trickery of war and hate monsters, well, you won't be part of that. Everything. The question. Fake revolutions. Y'all don't go. Y'all disappear. Fake revolution. Only entertains the passing children of aggression. Sometimes we get Yes, we're going to be uh, making revolution here, but really, it's the sense of semblance of it. This time, it has to really change. So they can't hurt us in public. I think it's right here in the Brunswick, right? Oh, well, the pepper spray at random. So we're going to let you do that again if you try it again. So what do they have to do? Stop. Just nothing wrong with having to do water and just 